So, you're fresh out of college, you just applied and got the teacher and manager position that you wanted, but you seem a little distressed. You're disorganized, scared, and simply don't know how to people. You're also crying in your bathtub eating a cup of ramen noodles because you can't seem to get your life together. So now what? Welcome to the 5 Managerial Skills for Dummies, Teacher and Manager Edition. In this video, we will be explaining 5 skills, planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling, each of which we will provide the do's and don'ts. So sit back and enjoy the video. For the first thing we're going to be talking about is planning. There are four key items you need to consider. For the first one is roles for all group members. Who is responsible for what? You would like to give out tasks for people that are good in your field. For example, you wouldn't want someone good at math writing your essay. You would prefer someone good in writing to do that instead for you. For the second thing in planning is channel of communication. How are the group members expected to interact? You want a clear way to communicate to all your co-workers. If not, there may be a chance for everyone not to be in alignment with each other. A good way to communicate with each other is to gather each other's phone numbers and make a group chat. There, everyone is in contact with each other to ask questions about the planning being done. The third thing for planning is standard processes. How are the team members expected to go about their work? For everyone in their group to be as efficient as possible doing their tasks, the best way possible is for them to work along with the teammates. Working along your co-workers bring up your motivation to do your work for the group. Also having your group members next to each other allows for a great interest working together, which can make the job a whole lot easier. Final thing of planning is quality requirements. What criteria must each project task meet? For this one to be achieved, you should always make a rubric for you and your team about yourself and make sure you're going by it. Therefore, you know the quality you and your team is looking for and you're part of the task. Once you finish this part of the planning, you have successfully planned your project. This stuff for teachers may be a little bit different. I talked to Ms. Scott, an A-Tech biology teacher, and she said that, that she planned the structure for a few weeks at a time. And then when it gets closer to the date, she figures out the activities and lessons she needs. Staffing can be described as the function of management that deals with the appropriate use of human resources. Some tasks within staffing include recruitment, selection, training, etc. Managers use the staffing function to decide which of the interviewees is most capable of undertaking the available job. In an interview I conducted with Renee, a staff manager for Las Vegas Entertainment Productions, she stated that when hiring and doing an interview, I basically informed the interviewee what the job is and what the pay is. I also informed them what is expected of a person and asked myself, do they have what it takes to do the job? This is important of any manager in the staffing function to do because they would want to make sure that they hire employees that are most capable of performing the, performing the tasks expected of them and are motivated to do so. Primarily, the counselors of a school take care of the staffing pertaining to students of the classroom. They examine if a student meets prerequisites for that course, check to make sure that the student wants to participate in the class, and confirm that the student's schedule can accommodate for this course. However, you as a teacher can and may have already used this function of management in your class. Since staffing requires the efficient allocation of human resources, a great example of staffing in the classroom is group assignments and projects. Group collaboration allows most students to engage more in the current activity and connect with their peers. This makes teamwork a task of staffing that a teacher can engage in because it efficiently uses the human resources students to effectively complete assignments, schoolwork. Today we're going to be talking about do's and do not do's for directing. Now we're going to divide this in two sections and one is going to be for managers and the other one is going to be for teachers. In the aspect of managers, what you should do is create social media to communicate with consumers and employees and vice versa. You should also have a balance between the income received to what is being put out. This could be done with checks or income sheets. And you should also order new supplies, conduct meetings for discussion on improvements slash achievements, orient employees in the right direction, refer back to the bigger authority, provide reports weekly. On the other hand, do's for teachers include contain lesson objectives and introduce background knowledge on lectures, provide visual and examples to keep the students engaged. Moving on, we're going to discuss the do nots. For managers, 
The time management is off and the report slash income sheets aren't reported weekly. Employees aren't guided or rewarded for hard work and then tasks become incomplete. No follow-up communication decreases clientele, employees lose the purpose of goals. No source of advertisement to increase customer awareness and give the boom factor. Now on the other hand, for teachers, there's no extra sources for help for student reference. No diversification of group and individual assignments. There's absence of stand-up entertainment with visuals, examples, or by having the teacher up and lecturing. Lacks motivating and setting goals upon students. Let students mislead the classroom. Show no interest in the development of a student. These are the do nots. Looking more into the aspect of managers, I had the privilege of interviewing my manager at Panda Express where I work at and she expressed that she has to direct each employee after the hiring process through orientation and keeping them in the right path. Not only that, but she also has the job of supply and demand, making sure that twice a week orders are being sent for new products and that the income being received is there to provide reports to the corporation, which in this case, the area manager is Mina. Uh, Myola passes it to Mina and Mina passes it to the corporation. Not only that, but she has to direct cashiers to start with only $100 and make sure they end with that amount and drop the rest. If not, this is considered a violation. In addition, Myola conducts meetings every month to show the overall progress of our store. Lastly, she has Snapchat and Instagram for one for our store specifically for new deals and specials and to have one-on-one -on -one communication with the customers in which she generates and manages all this on her own. Now, if you follow these do's and do nots, and you see this example of my manager and how she directs, I'm pretty sure that you'll have a successful journey in the directing aspect of a business. Thank you so much. Controlling involves monitoring the work effort. Controlling and planning can be considered of having a strong link between each other. Although controlling can be different between managers and teachers, they both have the same intentions. For managers, they coordinate the business's activities to make sure that the company is performing effectively and achieving its goals. So basically, the control function helps you to manage the finances of your business. Some of the do's for managers would be planning goals and initiating controlling checks to make sure that the goals are being met, updating the project plan if needed, maintaining communication with their employees, monitoring risk in case of any fallbacks, having progress checks with the project or team, and lastly, making corrections immediately after a problem was found. Some of the don'ts for managers would include assuming that everything is okay and skipping a monitor check, isolating yourself away from your employees, going with the flow when it comes to a small problem, and you try to do everything because you think you're the only person who can do it right. So the do's that you want as a teacher is updating traditional lessons if needed, maintaining communication with your students and groups during projects, monitoring risk by checking in on group leaders that report any issues, having benchmarks that demonstrate the progress of each student's work, and having a criteria made on assignments to evaluate a student's work and efforts. Some of the don'ts for teaching would be ignoring problems even if they seem small at first, isolating yourself from your students when they can need your help, giving an assignment without any instructions, having no extra sources of help for student reference, and lastly, you show no interest in the development of a student. It's really important to make sure that you really care about the student and show them that you care because this would resolve major issues that can lead on into the future. Upon my interview with Mr. Charles, a teacher from ATEC, he mentioned how he sets up roles in a classroom to initiate control. Usually, he gives out a set of instructions to the group leaders, and then the group leaders will go back into the groups and explain it to everyone else. This allows control for Mr. Charles without having to talk to every single student individually. This also allows the group leader to feel a sense of control and trust, which can also inspire other students within their groups to want to be a group leader. He also mentioned how he sets up weekly meetings with group leaders to talk about their progress and make sure that there's no issues within their project. This not only identifies the problem, but also allows the students to come up with solutions to the problem. 